with the extreme events happening a, a bit more frequently in recent times due to climate change and uh, you know we're seeing 100 year events happening on less than 100 year intervals Welcome to the Stantec.io podcast, where we speak to our scientists, designers, engineers, and architects who are combining subject matter expertise with cutting edge technology to develop digital solutions that can help solve problems of today and tomorrow. My name is Dave Roberts, and I'm joined by the newest member of the podcast team, Stantec.io product ambassador, Mike Arsenault. Welcome, Mike. Well, thank you very much, Dave. I'm really looking forward to being a part of this small but mighty team. I've listened to previous episodes, and at the time, I wished I could have been a part of the conversation. So I'm really excited to see exactly where the discussion takes us today. This episode is all about dams and the challenges facing owners and operators in terms of keeping those assets in safe working condition. And I think we have the perfect guest to facilitate this conversation, Vic Iso Ahola. Welcome, Vic. So Vic has been a uh, professional engineer for over two decades, working on award-winning projects, including the Panama Canal. Uh, and his current focus is on dam and spillaway rehabilitation projects. So it's, it's great to have you here today, Vic. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, Vic, before we get into the dam conversation, I, I just want to kind of reflect back on some of the experience that you've had in your engineering career. I mean, the Panama Canal, obviously you weren't part of the original construction because we're talking about uh, something that's over 100 years old, but you worked on the third set of locks project on the Panama Canal. So as an engineer, what was it like just being able to be on site of arguably one of the greatest feats of modern engineering in recorded history? Yeah, it, it can't be understated how you know the scale and size of such a project and and the honor to be a part of such a uh, iconic project you know for our generation you know the prior generations that was a massive project it was uh, this time around as well uh, sitting in the excavation which was a mile long for the new set of locks project it's just you it makes you feel really small and it, it makes you feel proud too that you had a small part in contributing to that new project so in terms of looking at dams and dam maintenance, what are some of these challenges that are facing our clients today, Vic? And how is Stantec helping to address those concerns? The dams in our country and, and worldwide, they're, uh, they are aging. There's um, average age uh, that's exceeding 50 years of dams in the, throughout the country. And with that, you, you can imagine uh, there are a variety of issues with each facility, with the dam structures, uh, with, with their spillways, with their outlet works, uh, depending on what technology was used at what time and the design standards. So those are quickly getting outdated. And of course, when we have uh, extreme events that damage these facilities and, and depending on how they're maintained and operated, there's also a quicker deterioration and that sort of thing. There is a long list of items that I, I could go through of what needs to be done, but um, I've hit on some of the high points, you know, spillways, uh, the Oroville dam incident back in 2017, but a new focus on doing more detailed inspections and more detailed risk reviews. And it also revealed a, a weakness in the slab spillway construction, which was uh, the reason why the Orville spillway failed. That triggered inspections throughout the state of California, as well as uh, by FERC throughout the country for similar type spillways. And it triggered uh, a lot of work and a lot of inspection. So that that's just one area of work that our, our dams are have been facing in recent years and our dam owners have been working on challenges in trying to, you know, balance their budgets and the timing of fixing issues and balance with what the, all the other maintenance items that they have with their facilities. Vic, I think when most people think about dams, they think of a, a site like the Hoover Dam. That is probably immediately springs to mind for most people. But I know there are many different types of dams, different uses of dams. So if you could just maybe take us through some of the clients that Stantec has, the different types of dams that we work on to ensure that those assets are in safe working condition. Yeah, so there's three main categories of dams uh, there's flood control dams that are built exclusively for that 
So, you know, you put them on a river and you capture the, you know, a larger flows, flood flows um, in a larger reservoir and release those in a, a measured fashion so that people downstream don't get flooded or minimize the flooding downstream. There are also water supply reservoirs, which is a straightforward item, right? You trap the water and then, and then you divert it to the water distribution system. And then you have dams that are constructed for hydropower. And everyone knows the basics of hydropower. You run the water through um, a turbine and that generates electricity through the turning of the turbine and turning of a generator. Of course, dams aren't built solely for one purpose. Uh, they can have multi-use. They can, can be used for all three of the above that I mentioned. And then uh, there are a variety of types of dams. We have uh, concrete dams. We have earthen embankment dams that are built from soil and sometimes even asphalt in their cores. And then there's the hybrid dams where we have embankments that have concrete central portion and any mix of the above. So what are the regulatory requirements associated with dams and what do we need to consider when we're making an assessment or modification to a, a dam facility? Well, we generally work using FERC, the Federal Emergency Regulatory Commission's Part 12D guidelines uh, as, as a way to guide our inspections. Even if a dam does not fall under FERC, the FERC guidelines or FERC jurisdiction, we use their guidelines because they're the most comprehensive. Many states have similar guidelines and unregulated dam owners will apply such guidelines. Um, other similar guidelines are also mandated or used by the Corps of Engineers for inspection of dams. So what those provide are what we need to inspect. Uh, we look at the major facilities of, at the dam, the outlet works, the intake structures, the uh, the general condition of a dam. So just how impactful are extreme weather events on the the health of a dam asset? Like what is what is the concern as we see more frequent severe weather? Uh, just how are the dam assets impacted by things like cracking, erosion, and uh, very heavy rainfall, uh, landslides, ground shifting, et cetera? Well, with, with the extreme events happening a, a bit more frequently in recent times due to climate change and, uh, you know, we're seeing 100-year events happening on less than 100-year intervals. Uh, so these facilities are are planned and, and constructed for 100-year events and, and beyond, but it's usually they're not expected very often during their lifetime. So when when they happen multiple times, you know, we always expect in extreme events some some level of ma increased maintenance that will be required because they're not built to be perfect to to perfectly uh, pass a flood or absorb all the rainwaters in and around the, the dam and reservoirs. There's always expected level of um, minor damage that can be fixed in these events. So when these occur a little more often, they, it, it incurs more O&M and maintenance Um but when they come through, uh, you can imagine if there's a, a heavy rains and onto the slopes, those slopes can erode. They can ravel and come down and block access to just maintenance facilities to, to open doors, to open valves, uh, to block spillways, um, block roadway access, roadways, things like that. And then when we have larger flows go through spillways, if they are aged and they have cracking, that could exacerbate the cracking. Uh, we can have armoring and lining erode away and then cause further damage, those sort of things. That's just a few few items that I can think of here off the top of my head. And with those extreme events happening, how can Stantec help to identify and mitigate some of these safety risks with dams? Well, we do these periodic inspections um, to do a comprehensive walkthrough and, and inform our owners that, of what the risks are, what the current state is, and we provide recommendations for repair or recommendations for monitoring, uh, recommendations for enhancement, uh, recommendations for upgrade based on current rules and regulation, as well as monitoring with current technology. We can, even at remote sites, provide instrumentation to, to better monitor their facilities when, 
when they're not there. A lot of these facilities are remote and not uh, you can't keep an eye on these uh, 24-7. So providing instrumentation and video and things like that or, or enhancements uh, that we can typically recommend. Uh, these aren't always mandates, though. Speaking of that instrumentation, what benefit does a piezometer have on that monitoring aspect of a, of a dam's assets and, and the health of that asset? So what a piezometer does is it measures the water level in the ground where it's installed. So it also, if it's installed inside an earthen embankment, it would measure the water, phreatic water surface uh, within the ground or within that uh, earthen embankment. And there would be an expected uh, phreatic surface based on the design of that uh, embankment. So if we see a change in that, uh, that goes beyond the range or the threshold values, that would alert an owner that uh, there's something happening and that we need to further investigate. The same thing would be um, if you have one on the the uh, the embankment, um, the abutment, as it's as it's called, you know, adjacent to it, where it, where it presses against. Um, if there's any you know change in water surface or seepage rate, um, that that tells us that something's happening in the the abutment foundation, and, and an owner would have to take um, extra measures to go and investigate. So can the monitoring help dam owners to reduce their operational and capital costs as well? Uh, it certainly can, uh, especially in the situation where where they don't have enough in the instrumentation, where there would be recommendations to either monitor a potential issue that um, has been identified post you know, original construction, or if there's just a you know, a lack of uh, instrumentation from the original designs. So we can we can recommend additional instrumentation for for monitoring and and, and making sure those catastrophic events don't happen, uh, so that the owner can address them before those ha- happen and save the save on costs. Vic, we've covered the issues of today facing dam owners and operators. I'm just wondering if you could give us give us maybe some insight on. What do you think will be the biggest challenge five, 10 years from now facing dam owners and operators? Just a continuation of what we've already covered, or is there something that perhaps is not necessarily keeping you up at night, but something that is, well, this could be a big issue down the road. How are we going to address something? Well, I think we're going to continue to see these extreme events uh, come up more frequently. So, and the the risks that the owners have to identify and manage uh, it are the, those risks are uh, getting that that list is getting longer for owners so they have a lot of things to address with limited time and limited budget as well as a limited um, consulting community we have only so many experts to support um, so many owners and um, that's that continues to be a challenge having having enough people to support uh, the industry to work through these challenges, you know, work, you know, identifying risks and then addressing the risks. Uh, and then when the extreme events come, helping owners recover from those and making their facilities more resilient. Vic, thanks so much for the enlightening conversation today. This actually marks the end of part one of our discussion on dams. Next time, we'll dive deep into Dam Insights, which is a digital solution created by Stantec that will help address all of the aforementioned challenges facing dam owners and operators. And thank you for listening. Future episodes will continue to explore how digital solutions are shaping our world. In the meantime, you can also visit our website at www.stantech.io for more information.